welcome to another fine episode of The Hammered Ham. Today, with Robert Mondavi's assistance, we are going to save an old National 183 receiver from its fate, laying in a junkyard, piled up with other rusty radios. I actually bought this radio a couple years ago, and it came in smashed due to poor packing. Well, guess what? I found another cabinet, and now we're going to make one good out of the two. Well, here's the original cabinet for the 183. You can see that the top does not align. This whole thing took a hit from the rear, pushed this edge forward. So now the whole thing is, as they say, kitty wampus, I believe is the word. If I flip it around, you can see the whammy mark. So yeah, I figured it was not worth trying to straighten it up simply because you'd always see these buckles there's one here and there's also one over here so that's a real bummer but luckily I was able to find a decent cabinet so for a little bit of history guys when I got it it came with this manual opened up to the front page and looky there this radio was actually purchased at a swap meet from W0HRO. I know this guy, he's another AMer. Said he traded at HQ180 Hammerlin for it at a Halloween ham fest 1025 of 08. And now it's here at D Lab, Ken. So I hope you see the video, man. All right, so let me show you guys the game plan here. So here is the replacement NC183 cabinet. It's not perfect but it's clean and it's straight. When I picked up this radio, it actually had a bad power transformer and unfortunately was missing the bottom panel. But guess what? I've got the bottom panel from the original, so no loss there. Okay, here's the back of it. This one actually has the serial number tag on it, whereas that other 183 didn't. I don't know why that is. So anyway, she's super clean. It's missing one screw here. I'll steal that off the other one. Let me show you the chassis now, and I'm going to give you guys a couple tech tips. Well, here is the chassis removed from the cabinet of the 183 receiver. Check out that construction, huh? She is just gorgeous. These guys really knew how to make radios back then. Okay. So the first thing I always do with these is pull out the filter cap and replace it. The reason a lot of these power transformers fail is because the main filter cap shorts out, draws excessive current, melts down the transformer. So let me show you a great replacement for the original cap in this radio. So this was a cap that I removed. This is a dual 10 microfarad cap at 475 volts. If you look at the base, you see you've got your two positives and the negative and the negative floats it is not connected to the can of this cap so that's what you need to replace it with don't put a standard can filter cap on this or you're going to damage the radio here is the replacement it's made by ARS it's a dual 16 microfarad 500 volts goes right in the place of the original you just swing the wires on you're off and running all right tech tip number two a lot of these radios out there, you'll find that the tuning is getting very stiff on them. I've had a lot of these between the 183s and 173s come into the shop. And I always thought it was simply a matter of cleaning and lubing. But now I've discovered the real cause. You guys are going to love this. Let me flip it on its side and I'll show you something and keep this one on file. All right, this is kind of difficult to show you, but I'm sure you guys will get the idea. This is the band spread tuning control. So you got your flywheel. This is the disc that you see here, okay? So this is the knob. Now behind it, there's this little funny, like crimp type pulley that grabs the edge of that plastic disc. So when you tune, simply just pushes that disc through the little pulley surface now in front of it if you look right down there you'll see a little spring okay 
it's like a little spring cushion that keeps this guy spaced away from that nut okay so what happens I guess over time is it must deteriorate and it falls out and when that happens this pulley shifts forward right against that bushing and it locks up the tuning so you lose this flywheel free spin effect okay so I had to pull the one out of the main tuning and I actually removed this assembly from the other receiver and replaced it it's got a little bit bigger little drive pulley here than the other one does but it works perfect let me show you the one I removed so here is the original you can see the little drive pulley and there's the bushing you see that slop in there so what happens is when you put this on the front of the radio and you put the nut on there and tighten it it just pulls that drive pulley right against this developing a lot of friction and it locks up your tuning so a lot of guys will sit there and they'll force it and when you force it since this is offset it will crack or damage the edges of the tuning dials and then you really hose right because you're not going to buy those so thank god i had the uh, hanger queen as i call it so this one here will just join the pile in case somebody needs something like the bushing or the flywheel all right we might as well pan the bottom side now somebody in the past did replace quite a few capacitors and resistors so I have not went much further yet I want to give this thing a performance check before I do too much more work to it right there is that filter cap that I told you I replaced so that's just the original wiring just swing it right back to the terminals it really goes in there slick another area that I'd highly recommend you take a close look at is the IF strip the resistors that feed it and all the caps they're always way out of tolerance I just change them don't even think about it so of course make sure that you have the manual for the radio because there's a real handy little chart here you can verify the voltages on all those tube pins this will alert you quickly to any problems that the radio has okay so for instance over here you see our three IF tubes V8, V6 and V5 you can go right to the pin they even show you the orientation okay you go right to the pin there it is 280 then down here shove 180 I always use these little insulated tips because it's real easy to slip and cause some argy spark in now right, here we go Time to slide the chassis into its replacement cabinet. The biggest thing you got to watch out for is those two dials, okay? They're very fragile. If you get in a hurry and you hit them, you're going to crack them, and then you're going to cry. All right, let's get it in. You'll find that you got to lift these chassis up a little bit because there's a lip on this chassis. Set it up on that lip. Then go around the other side. And you can slowly slide them into place. Watching those dials. Okay. I've done a few of these. And I've at times came really close screwing them up so. all right so it's laying in the bottom I'll make sure I have good alignment and then I'll bring her forward Looking good she is get these nuts on here popping a couple screws but it's getting close all right she's in everything looks good just got to get these guides for the dials installed pop on the knobs and then we'll be ready to test all right got to fire it up I'm 
just using a uh, short wire in the shop at this point. So here's 80 meter band. So we need to get her on a real antenna, but the good thing is it lights up, it's receiving, all the controls appear to be working. Alright, so the hammered ham's listening to the National 183, and guess what? Can't do this without Vino. Look at there. It's being poured. Right, Toe, what do we got? What do we got? Robert Mondavi. Robert Mondavi. Bourbon barrel. Right to Cabernet Sauvignon. Well, when was it made, Marsh? What year is it? Um, what's copyright on that label? I don't know. I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> okay. All right. Anyway, you guys get the point. We got the national on 80 meters right now. I am. There's Tim Tran. Wonder if I can dial in the selectivity. National suffered from the fact that they were short wave so you've got your main tuning you got your band spread so you're always wondering where I, where am I at a band spread right this one's really close but if you take this receiver and go to 4 megahertz and flip this switch it'll spot you see it Because this receiver has a built-in one megahertz calibrator, so we are right on frequency. I'm here a lot during the day for the new work, and I still work on fourteen. The side bander. Alright, back on with these guys on the East Coast. Super, super, super linear. Exactly, exactly. Very, very, uh, I am the clean thing that you want to use if you've got a ton of transmitters and receivers out of sight, you know. Way better spec. Listen to that 6v6 push pull audio. Yes, well, I mean, dude, that, that thing would be perfect for what I want to do. Um, so I don't know. Let's check that out. Where, the, where is this guy? 
who's up in the neighborhood that's, that's, uh, we have pizza there, Billy. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, dang. Um, yeah, I have to think about that, but it's kind of, kind of interesting. I could do half of what we could do, but, you know, probably not. If you want to see the calibrator module. Pop the lid here. It's back there on the right hand corner. It's a D Lab XCU 1M made specifically for the 183 receiver. Let me give you a quick guided tour of the calibrator system that's installed in the 183. Right here is a switch that says Phono Radio. Originally, you could run a phonograph through the receiver. Obviously, you're not going to do that anymore, so I utilized this switch to turn on and off a 1 megahertz crystal calibrator, which sits right back here in the accessory socket. As you know, the 183 never offered a crystal calibrator, so this is a custom unit. I'm going to cut to the little diagram. You can see how it's wired up. It's pretty basic. All right, so you simply insert the module, rewire the socket, and then you have to rewire that front switch to turn on and off the 150 volts to the calibrator. So here it is in operation. Let's say you're on 40 meters, okay? You see that dot on the main dial for 40? That's where they want you to set it to be close for your band spread. But with the calibrator, you can take your band spread Put it right on 7 megahertz, okay? Just turn down the calibrator, then you adjust the main tuning until you see that. Okay, let me turn it up and you can hear the calibrator. Right there. Turn it off, and now your band spread is calibrated for the 40 meter band. So there it is. If you want some more information on this calibrator system, contact me. But this receiver really does well on sideband too. You just gotta back off your RF gain. These filters yeah. work pretty yeah, well on this radio. receiver. Not so bad on 80. It depends on the radio. Uh, the one that does, that uh, Steve's working with, uh, uh, Kenwood's always, I thought, did a very good job on sideband, uh, just in general. Uh, I have a hard time, and I did when I initially had one, getting that excited about the... Uh, to the sideband audio receive quality, not transmit, but receive quality on the H50. Uh, uh, it always to me was a very, uh, like Joe would say, probably hissy uh, sounding receiver. And, uh, uh, so it's pretty amazing uh, the selectivity that, that you can get on sideband. Let's see if we can find somebody else here. It 
you, 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 you frowned on 14 in Manhattan or even Brooklyn. So you frowned just on listen 14 on lights. To this side uh, band. First of all, in the city, you can't get away with it. It's not Crystal violent. clear. In, in, in the, uh, in, in the um, over here, they put 14 on the lights, which I have, and they fuse it at 15 amps. But it's still, it's still it's stupid to save a couple of pennies. Just put 12, you know? And they put 12 on the on the outlets here. But these builders, to save 10 cents, Angelo. Oh, that's how it works there. And up here, uh, only commercial, you have to be getting this to 14 in commercial. Only 12. Uh, uh, residential is 14. Can't use 14 even in residential in New York City. Okay, so the Hammered Ham saves another national classic receiver. The 183 is working perfectly. We'll take a mission accomplished on this one. Got a little problem though.